Tonight, I'm going to show you how to make Cadbury Flake. Stick around. Greetings, my confectionery compadres, and welcome to Randy Makes Candy, where I help you make tasty treats that people love to eat. I was speaking with a good friend not too long ago, and the subject of candy came up. He mentioned Cadbury Flake and asked if I'd thought about doing an episode devoted to them. I said that it had been ages since I'd had one, but that I'd put it on my list to research. A few days later, what should appear on my doorstep but a whole package of Cadbury Flakes. <laughs> with motivation like that, well, here we are. By the by, delivered to your doorstep is about the only way most of us can buy a flake. They're made in the UK and are difficult to find here in the colonies. The flake is quite similar to Cadbury's Aero, but whereas the Aero is an aerated chocolate, the flake is kind of folded, like it's come out of a pasta machine or something. <laughs> After racking my brain failing to figure out how I was going to recreate this unique treat, I was ready to give up and consider it the great white whale of homemade candies. Then I came across a video created by food scientist Anne Reardon on her channel How to Cook That. If you haven't been to her channel, you should consider checking it out. She really does have some amazing videos. I'll put a link in the description. Anyway, she took the challenge of figuring out how the flake was produced, succeeded magnificently, and that's what I'm going to show you tonight. As always, I'd love to hear about your results if you decide to make your own Cadbury flake, as well as suggestions for other recipes you'd like to see in future videos. As far as ingredients and supplies are concerned, this is a super simple recipe. 50 grams of real milk chocolate and one third teaspoon of liquid. When I say real chocolate, I mean it has to contain cocoa butter. And the liquid can be water, skim milk, or anything like that. I'm using oat milk because that's what we have. I also used a spoon, a cutting board, some parchment, a rolling pin, and an offset spatula. Okay, let's make some candy. Melt the chocolate in the microwave for 30 seconds and give it a stir. We're not worried about tempering, and you'll see why in just a moment. If it's not fully melted, put it back in the microwave for 10 seconds and give it another good stir. Repeat until it's fully melted. Add the liquid and stir until it turns into a congealed mass. Congratulations, you've just seized your chocolate. Normally, that's the exact opposite of what you want to do. Somehow, though, Anne Reardon figured out that seized chocolate is exactly what you need for a flake. If you'd like to learn more about seized chocolate, including how to avoid it and what you can do with it, stick around after the recipe. Place the lump of chocolate on a lined cutting board, cover it with another sheet of parchment, and roll it out as flat and thin as you can. Use the spatula to separate the chocolate from the parchment and fold and shape it into a bar. If you want to get extra fancy, you can score the top to give it that authentic tree bark appearance. Continue with the rest of the chocolate and leave the bars on the counter for a few hours to set. And that's it!
Okay, let's have a taste. What we're looking for here is a great tasting chocolate with a dry, crumbly texture that melts in your mouth. Slanchava. Man, that texture is spot on. A little bit of a bite, then it goes all crumbly until it starts melting in your mouth, suffusing it with that delightful chocolate flavor. This is really a near perfect recreation of a Cadbury flake, and I'm still amazed that the secret ingredient is seized chocolate. I guess this is the real C's candy. Chris, thank you for the inspiration, and Ms. Reardon, thank you for all your hard work. Compadres, if you want to make your own version of this amazing confection, you really ought to try these. Chocolate candy at its most basic is a combination of cacao particles, cocoa butter, and sugar. When you melt chocolate, what you're really doing is melting the cocoa butter, which is a fat, creating an emulsion, where the melted fat suspends the cocoa and the sugar. If you introduce a little liquid into the mix, the water avoids the fat, but is attracted to the sugar, causing it to clump together, or as we say, seize. If you're preparing to dip, mold, or drizzle your chocolate, and it seizes, it's ruined, and you have to start over. You'll never get that shiny, snappy chocolate that you want. So make sure that your bowls and utensils are completely dry before you start melting your chocolate. And if you're melting it with a double boiler or a bain-marie, be extra careful not to let any of the steam condense into the chocolate. If you do happen to seize your chocolate though, don't toss it out. You can still use it to make a sauce or a ganache or hot chocolate or something similar. Just remember, carpe diem, but don't carpe chalarisque.